Welcome back. This week, we've got news of two different takeovers in the natural resources space. Goldfields purchased a Cisco Mining, or agreed to do so, and Tourmaline Oil is picking up crew energy. It's been an active deal-making market for the sectors, and it's not expected to slow down anytime soon, according to our next guest, especially here in Canada. Barrick Gold, Chief Executive Officer, told us yesterday here on BNM Bloomberg that he's keeping an eye out for opportunities as gold prices push higher. For more on the state of M&A in the resources sector, we're joined by Scott Bauer, CEO of Prosper Trading Academy. Scott, uh, thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, is it, should it come Pleasure. as any surprise that we're seeing a lot of deals? I mean, oil prices, generally speaking, are high. Metals prices are high, and share prices of these uh, producers tend to be high as well. This sounds like the type of environment that lends itself to M&A. Oh, absolutely, and I think it, when you throw in the prospect of central banks cutting interest rates uh, pretty imminently, if you will, I think that is a really, really rosy picture for M&A. You know, deal value across uh, the global mining markets last year, they were about $120 billion. This year, they're on pace for even more than that. So I think you've got really a perfect environment for, for the reasons that you said, in addition to what central banks are, are most likely doing here, for m and to continue and continue in a real big way. Uh, you say in some notes that, uh, quote, gold miners are in play. You think we're gonna see uh, more of it uh, in particular in the gold space? I do think we will. You know, so, soaring prices here, as you said, prices at all time highs here, I think that is, the perfect scenario makes it ripe for this M and A, and and I think we're going to see numerous deals, whether they're they're actually in the third or fourth quarter of this year, or going into next year, if the environment stays the way it is, and especially throw in you know some some of the tailwinds to precious metals and to gold with geopolitical risks and and maybe a an aversion you know to to risk sentiment here. Yes, I absolutely believe that will continue. You've got 25 years plus experience uh, in looking at things uh, like this. When you do uh, see a deal announced, how do you, how do you assess, how do you make a, a, a call on whether this is a, a good deal for the, acquire, uh, the acquiring company, the company that's doing the buying uh, or not? It, it, you know, and I would add that in the gold space, I think the, the history of M&A in, in gold is, is uh, perhaps checkered. There have been a lot of bad deals, uh, uh, for, oh, yeah. uh, 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 bad, bad acquisitions in the gold space over the years years and decades. For, for sure, and the, and the two that you mentioned, the ones that we're looking at, the one in the gold space and the one in, in natural gas, are, are two separate deals. One, one is a, a share buyout, share acquisition. One is a total cash acquisition. I typically like the cash acquisitions so that the, the acquirer does not get diluted at all. And that usually tells me also that they may be in a better financial position if they're willing to just you know pay a number up front here, then they obviously have the reserves. Again though, in this environment where we have some higher interest rates right now, but with the expectation that rates are going to come down, I think either one is probably okay, but generally I prefer the cash deal as opposed to getting diluted on a per share basis. And how do you assess uh, uh, acquisitions in the gold space when, as, as in the case of the Goldfields or Cisco deal, uh, the acquired asset is nowhere near the other assets of the company. Uh, Goldfields is most active in South Africa. The asset it's buying is in northern Quebec. Uh, how, how does the company make that work? Well, I think what they really wanted to do in this instance was get a bigger footprint in the Americas. They, they are, you know, from South Africa, as you mentioned, they have mines in Chile and in Peru, and I think they look to you know the continents over here, North America, South America, as real nice potential upside. So I think they wanted to diversify out from South Africa, which they are doing, and this really up really opens up a global playing field for them. Why don't we finish with your view on uh, on gold? Uh, do you remain bullish? On, or are you bullish on gold as we are very close now to the highest price center? I, I am bullish, but what I have been telling my my students and and people that follow me is, don't rush into it. 
I'm looking to buy any dip. Now that dip, I'm not looking for a five or 10% dip. Any dip that we get, one, 2% dip, I think is a great time to accumulate because in this environment where we are seeing inflation coming down, we're seeing central banks, you know, probably in the easing cycle and with geopolitical unrest, probably not getting any better, unfortunately, anytime soon. Yes, I do see the gold rally continuing.